family board meeting call to order. We are discussing backpacks today. Snapshot, you want to tell me about your backpack? Yeah, I'll start off. So when I was searching for a backpack, I wanted something that was lightweight, but not super, super uber light, but it would not be durable. So I wanted something in between like the big chunky Ospreys and want something that big, but I wanted something more durable than like a Hyperlite because those things apparently develop holes and tears and it's basically a disposable backpack that you're gonna wear through in a mm -hmm. through hike. So I landed on ULA. I got the ULA Circuit, which is sort of a medium sized bag in their lineup. Um, it has, it, it's very lightweight. It's like two pounds maybe with nothing in it. Um, it's got everything a backpack should have. It has a um, solid like main aluminum stay through the, through the center of the back. It has like a frame that goes around the edge of the backpack. So there's some structure to it, uh, but it's still very lightweight. And the weight capacity, they recommend not overloading it past about 35 pounds. So that is the one downside of the backpack is you cannot overload it. So my loadout was usually between like anywhere from like 28 to 36 pounds, depending on the food load, depending on what we were, how far we were going. Um, so most of the time it rode perfectly. If we did any bigger water carries um, into camp or we had an especially large food load or I wasn't really uh, careful about what I bought, um, I, would, I would push it to like 36, 37 pounds. And that's when you could start to feel it like, oh, it's a little heavy, but it still held up and I, it carried fine. It was just a little bit more uncomfortable because it was heavier. But overall, I loved the backpack. It was extremely durable, it held up well. Um, interchangeable hip belts for the right, you can get the right size. Um, what else about that backpack? I just like the design of it. It's very minimalistic and simple. Mm -hmm. There's not like, there's no brain. It's just one big pack, two side pouches, um, a mesh pouch on the outside with a bunch of shock cord on the back. So you could like, I threw my camp shoes on the back with the shock cord. Um, I could just quickly throw my um, rain gel on the back and let it dry out. Just slap it behind the shock cord, super easy. Um, super simple, durable, loved and you, it. And you had a roll top on your back. And I had a roll top closure. You could close multiple ways. Yeah, it was, um, it was great. If I did it again, I would definitely stick with ULA. I think it was a good pack for this hike. And you had the, the circuit? The circuit, yeah. Okay which is sort of a middle middle of the road. They have some lighter weight ones that hold less and some couple heavier duty ones that hold more, but this is a good middle ground. So I started the trail with one bag, ended it with a different one. I started out with a Gregory 58 liter optic bag and that was not the bag for me. Uh, it fit well, it was comfortable to wear. However, it just, it, when they say a 35 pound weight limit for that bag, they mean if you load it up to 35 or around that, it's just gonna start giving out on you. And I know that because the shoulder straps tore off of my backpack. And fortunately I was able to make it into a town before they tore off completely, but I got to um, Hot Springs and I had to buy a different backpack. So from Hot Springs onward, I wore the uh, Osprey 65 liter Volt. Awesome bag, I love it. It is incredibly durable. Massive step up from a 35 pound weight limit to a 65 pound weight limit, which I never hit. Um, I a couple of times got around 50 pounds. Uh, more than once I took a pound of fudge with me out of town as part of my food carry and I stand by that. Great decision, I love fudge, it's incredible. Um, but describing the bag, uh, it does not have interchangeable hip belts. So what you have is what you have. What is nice though, is you can adjust the length of the torso. If you are someone with a longer or shorter torso, um, it does have a brain, which you could remove if you so desired. I liked it. I stored a lot of things in the brain of my bag, just enough space for the water bottles on the side, not enough space for carrying larger items the way that uh, some people do. Uh, one of my biggest complaints about the bag is that it does not have a mesh pouch on the uh, back of it, um, which was a bit frustrating at times because it made quick access to certain items less quick uh, and less accessible. 
Um, but all in all, I love that bag. I feel like I could throw it off a cliff, walk down, pick it up, dust it off, and walk off with it being none the worse for wear. Um, I love it. I highly recommend Osprey. They make tough, durable gear. Yep. And then I carried a Gossamer gear, Mariposa 60 liter for the entire trip. Um, the size small is actually seems to be a slightly smaller literage than um, like Lucky, who was with us for the first 500 miles, had a, a large um, because he was, you know, obviously bigger than I was uh, because I am tiny. <laughs> And it seemed like his had a little bit more space in the leaderage than mine did. Um, it had an interchangeable hip belt. Um, they send you the medium as a default. You can order a small or a large hip belt, depending on what you need, and send them the medium back. Um, so I ended up getting a size small hip belt. Um, I love this pack about 90% of the time. Um, I say this because it's actually the, the pack I finished with was the second incarnation of the backpack. So uh, about the time I got to New Hampshire into the whites, my seams on my shoulder straps and my carry straps started splitting, uh, which meant that they were going to tear off at some point um, if I continued to load the bag. So I ended up reaching out to Gossamer here. They sent me a warranty replacement. The only problem was they refused to send me a replacement hip belt. Uh, the design of the backpack is such that the, the actual carry straps on the backpack had worn holes through the hip belt itself. Um, and that's just... A, sucky design feature. So I ended up putting a holy hip belt on my new backpack, uh, which I was not a huge fan of, but it still worked. Also the size small hip belt for whatever bizarre reason, instead of doing two zipper closer pockets on them, they replaced the pocket on the right side with a half mesh pocket that I could basically fit nothing in. So I ended up jerry rigging a uh, Cotopaxi side pouch to it to put all my snacks in. Um, the backpack itself is a great pack. It's just a clip close on the top. Um, has like a little pocket on the top. I used it for my bag of all bags. In other words, like my Ziplocs. And uh, it's a top load down. It worked out really well. It was just enough space. I did fit a BB475 uh, bear can sideways in it. And that worked out really, really well. I could put that right in the middle of my pack and really load the pack perfectly. Um, adjustable shoulder straps, adjustable load uh, bearers. Um, and then I had some nice side pouches. Uh, so one side was a closed uh, pouch made of the same material that the backpack was. I kept my um, umbrella and my tent and my polycro in that side pouch and that worked out really well. And then they have two um, pouches on the opposite side. I used one for water bottles and one for my rain gear and CNOC and then the mesh pouch on the front, which was fantastic. The only thing I'll say about that mesh pouch on the front though is a lot of other people who carried the Gossamer Gear Mariposa had torn their mesh pouch to shreds. So you just be careful about what you do with your backpack with that pouch. And I ended up adding a set of lock laces over the mesh pouch on the back and then my water bottle holders on the side just to give a little extra security and some extra space for me to do things like hang my socks off the back of my pouch when they pouch, um, my pack when they were wet for like the fifth day in a row. Um, so I definitely recommend the pack. I loved it. Um, but Again, durability was an issue because I had to send it back to the company. That being said, Gossamer Gear responded to me pretty much immediately after I had sent it, um, sent them a, a message about it, and they did replace the pack. So just some things to keep in mind when you guys are shopping for packs. Um, base weight of the pack itself, like Snapshot and I were pretty light packs. MC's yeah. was not, but the higher carrying capacity, the higher leaderage, um, you have to get a heavier backpack. So depending on what your needs are and how much money you wanna spend on ultralight gear, um, just take that into consideration whenever you're shopping for packs. Also, I will say, a lot of people make this mistake. Make the pack the last thing you buy. Buy your other gear first and then look at all your gear and say, what leaderage do I need to put all this gear in and how much mm -hmm. is it gonna weigh? And then base your backpack decision on that. Don't get the backpack first because then you probably either under or over buy gear for it and yeah. you, you won't have the right backpack for your loadout. Remember, if you're gonna buy a backpack with 65 liters, you're probably gonna fill it to 65 liters because yeah. of that's human nature. If you buy a backpack that's 50 liters, you're gonna fill it to 50 liters, and then you might be like, oh man, I need extra space. So a lot of outfitters, if you bring all of your stuff in a trash bag or whatever to the outfitter and you're like, can mm -hmm. I load out a backpack with this? They're like, sure, how about it? Yep. And then they'll let you try the backpack on with your full load in it. They might even give you recommendations on how to pack your stuff better. Heck, they might even help you with a shakedown. You never know. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if you go to REI, REI is fantastic about fitting people for backpacks. 
um, or even your local outfitter. Because a lot of the local outfitters will carry the smaller brand packs, things like the ULAs, Gossamer Gear, Hyperlite, mm -hmm. uh, Granite Gear. Um, you, you can find those at smaller outfitters, whereas you're going to find things like Ospreys and Gregory's um, at the bigger name outfitters like REI. So just take all that into consideration if you guys are pack shopping, um, because it is your house. You know, mm -hmm. it's your house yeah. and it's your car and it's your, your, it's your everything for six months or however long your adventure is. Yeah, don't get some, do not get something that is good enough. Get something that is good because when you are picking it up and carrying it 20 miles every day, you need it to be reliable. Everything that yeah. you have needs to be reliable. It doesn't have to smell good and it doesn't have to be clean, <laughs> but it needs to work and be reliable you have every to, day. You have to like the way it's designed from the bottom up. It has to feel right to you. Otherwise yeah. it's, you're gonna, you're gonna be fighting it the whole hike if it mm -hmm. doesn't. And always remember guys, please, for the love of all things, tighten your hip belt first. You yes. should be carrying all of that weight on your yes. hip bones. Don't carry it on your shoulders. You will hate your life if you do that. Yeah. This is all the advice we have. Any comments, questions, concerns, leave in the comments below. Board meeting adjourned. Bye-bye.